I extend a warm welcome to everyone at home to celebrate the Trinity Sunday. Let us begin our worship service by singing the hymn, Love Divine, O Love Excelling, hymn number 428, hymn number 428. <laughs>
God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by God's Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace in the profession of true love faith to recognize the glory of the eternal Trinity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and bring us to see you in your perfect and eternal unity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now, let us listen to the word of God. The first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 1 beginning at verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 11. Final greeting. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses from 16 to 20. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Today is Trinity Sunday. When we speak about Trinity, we would say God is three in one. It is a mysterious 
and also quite difficult concept to understand. Once a bishop was visiting a parish for the confirmation service. The bishop asked the young people, who can explain the meaning of Trinity? A girl from the back said, it is one God in three persons. The bishop could not hear the answer well, and so he said, I don't understand. Please repeat. The girl replied, you are not expected to understand because it is a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. Day before yesterday, people all over the world observe the World Environment Day. I think it would be better if we could understand today's topic, Trinity, in connection with God's creation. God has been revealed to us in different ways. As God, the Father, the Creator and Recreator -cre of all. As God, the Son, whose life, death and resurrection brought salvation for all creation. And as God, the Holy Spirit, the force that breathes life into us. We experience the completeness of God in all those different expressions. Today's first reading points out a new perspective to understand the doctrine of Trinity in the light of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We see God in history from the very moment of creation through the mighty works of the world or logos and the spirit. We can say that the Trinitarian history is revealed to us from the, from the moment of the creation of the earth. And the Trinitarian history reveals God's relationship with the universe. The Trinitarian experience in the universe dwells in the divine community of nature. This experience respects nature's interdependence and participates in mutual relationship with it. The Trinitarian experience in creation teaches us that the whole of creation from the beginning has a messianic orientation toward a future goal, that is, all created beings' glorification through divine indwelling. The spirit in creation co-suffers with the creation in its bondage to decay, keeping it open to God and its future with God. The Bible shows us a God whose nature is relationship of love. He is the creator of the community of all the living and non-living beings. He is a community of love. We worship and profess a God of love. He is the source of love. He is the act of love and he is the end of love. John's Gospel says that God so loved the world that he sent his beloved son. From his unfathomable love, Christ becomes one who suffers with the earth, incorporating the natural world into the redemptive purpose. God partakes in our human experience in all its aspects and thus becomes a true companion on our road of life. God knows what we are going through. God of love on the cross stands for all human suffering, violence, terror and death. Whenever we experience brutality in this world today, we see God of love crucified again. We see in the Bible that the world that God found good has also the possibility to turn to chaos by the sinful acts of humankind. God sent his son to the world to recreate it because the, hu because the human approach to our world is turned into chaos. Christ is the ground and the redeemer of the world. In Jesus, we can see God's wisdom. 
his love and trust of creation this understanding makes the idea of the world as god's body because the story of jesus reveals that the meaning of the incarnation of jesus christ is connected with liberation healing and inclusive love therefore jesus christ is continuous with the church and the cosmos the incarnation reveals persuasive love as god's most essential attribute <coughs> and god expresses and reveals god's self in the cosmos <coughs> through the process of creation through which the god self is extended to the physical world the father and the son love each other so deeply that their love was poured out in the person of the spirit on all those who believed in the same manner if we know and love god intimately then we are urged to make sure that our intimacy is also for all living and non living beings when the lord was lifted up to heaven he consoled his disciples saying that he would not leave them orphans he would send his own spirit to them as their guide and companion and thus he would stay with them the spirit gives life to all things sustains all things in life and brings all things to rebirth beyond death and beyond the reach of death i like the way a german reform theologian moltmann understand holy spirit he understand holy spirit as the divine source of love life the eternal spirit is the divine will spring of life the source of life created the life preserved and life daily renewed and finally the source of eternal life of all created beings in today's gospel passage we see that jesus gives assurance to his disciples while he sends them to proclaim the trinitarian god experience to the whole world the assurance is that i am with you always the trinitarian god experience offers a marvelous and faithful promise the promise is that this experience will come to us when we are alone the trinitarian experience will heal our suffering body which is part of the cosmic body the trinitarian experience will lead our life forward with cosmic energy god's unfathomable love to all creation will encircle us to experience the abundant life this is indeed a great hope that the triune god gives to the world at this time of covid-19 pandemic this morning the god of love which is revealed in the trinitarian experience says to us that everything you endure god endures your troubles your thorns your pains your fears your doubts your sin he is there with you always right by your side bearing on it his shoulders wearing it on his head feeling in his hands feet and side because where you are he is also your crosses are his cross and he dies on it for you not taking you around all those things but straight through them for jesus the savior of the world has overcome the cross and the grave which is where our every problem leads not only god is where you are but you are where is go where god is you are a part of his body his cosmic body a part of his church where his word is proclaimed and his sacraments 
are administered. We are called to create a community of all living and non-living beings. In this community, there should not have any discrimination or division. The Trinitarian community of love must be placed at the center of our approach to our fellow beings. Therefore, let us immerse into the Trinitarian God to uphold a new value system that could sustain interrelatedness and interdependence of every being on this earth. This morning, I would like to pray to God that the Holy Spirit will anoint us to make disciples in order to create new understanding of power and responsibility that could equip us to nurture and care for all living and non-living beings. Amen. Let us pray. The mystery of God, creator, redeemer and sanctifier all at once is beyond our human understanding, yet closer to us than breathing. So let us pray to the Father through Jesus the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring before you, O God, the needs of the Church across the world. Revive and refresh us, teach and direct us. Inspire all who preach, teach and gossip the news and uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. Here at home, we pray for Paul and our congregations of all saints and St John's. We pray for our church in Scotland and in the planning for moving on from the present lockdown. God of mystery and compassion, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, the particular problems of our time and place. Renew in us a commitment to community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Give protection to all who are vulnerable and solace to all who are traumatised. Here at home, we pray for all workers and individuals who are supporting us through the pandemic. We pray for those who are running all the other services and voluntary care which are part of our daily lives but so difficult to carry out in the lockdown. God of mystery and compassion, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O oh God, the nurturing of our children and young people in homes and parenting, schools and teaching, in the expectations and pressures and dangers they face and in the hopes and possibilities for good. Here at home, we pray for our local education department, for our teachers and lecturers, for children in and out of school, for pupils awaiting exam results. We pray for families struggling with childcare and homeschooling and for those with special needs. God of mystery and compassion, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, all who are hungry and malnourished, and those who cannot cope with excess, all who are ill and those who care for them all who are unhappy and those who comfort them, all who have no one to turn to. Here at home, we pray for our congregations and especially for Anne Fairn, for Chloe Terry, for June Farquharson and David, 
from June Henry. And in a moment of quietness, we pray for our family and friends and for all whose concerns are on our hearts. God of mystery and compassion, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, all who have died to this earthly life. We give thanks for their lives well lived and love shared. We commend them to your love and mercy. And we pray that you may bring them and us in our turn safely to heaven. Here at home, we pray for Heather and Joe in the sudden loss of their dad. And in a moment of quietness, we remember our own departed loved ones and pray for solace for all who grieve. God of mystery and compassion, Hear our prayer. We bring before you, O God, our lives and all that we are. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new life, new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the world existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to all us all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He brought the bonds of evil, and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, it is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me.
we now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom, made one with him. We offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, there may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory, may we grow together in unity and love. Until at last, new, new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, Unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious, and His mercy endures forever. Let's pray. Father, we have broken the bread, which is Christ's body. We have tasted the wine of His new life. We thank you for these gifts, by which we are made one in Him, and drawn into that new creation, which is your will for all humankind. Through Him, who died for us, and rose again, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding.
Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.